creating a legacy that outlasts you. Can you help me welcome Katie and Jonathan Mendoza? Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, first of all, that video, I, I never got to tell you guys personally. <laughs> this is like the 15th time I've probably watched that video. I'm like, that ah, was just so amazing. It just put, put me in a place of like, man, Lord, knowing you guys personally <laughs> put me in a place of, no, know you guys personally and then seeing God still move in what you guys do, you know, whether it's the podcast, whether it's the filmmaking, it's, it's, it's beautiful because we, we've talked about it, just like being multifaceted um, as humans. So before, I, I mean, we all saw what you do, but I would love for you guys to tell me more about what you guys do together and then actually exist to equip and empower sons and daughters to advance the kingdom of heaven, right? So how is what you're doing advancing the kingdom? Hi, everybody. I'm Katie. Um, before, before we start, I just want to take a minute and honor... Um, just the leaders in this house. Pastor Jasmine is, I'm sure most of you, if not all of you know her because she's that kind of leader. She's approachable. Um, and she truly, like when you're standing in front of her, she cares about you. And there are so many leaders that you can tell they're ready to move on to the next person. And that is the opposite of who Pastor Jasmine is. And so um, her and the entire leadership team, whether you're from Mercy Culture or you're visiting from another church, um, care and put so much um, prayer into Axel. And we've gotten to see the behind the scenes. And this is, I mean, it's not really the beginning, but it kind of is because I believe the Lord is going to bring Axel into a new, when I was in worship, let me just share this real quick. Um, yes. I saw yes. a picture of Narnia. Um, Narnia number three, um, the last scene when they all go to like the beat, the, the wave that's like standing up and Aslan's there and they're like about to cross over into the water. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Um, so I had that picture so vividly and I felt like Axel. I felt, I saw Pastor Jasmine, but then I saw Axel about to 
like run in. So in Narnia, if you know Narnia, um, they spend time with Aslan who, who for us here, like we've, we spend time with Jesus. We love Jesus. He's everything we, we are about. But when they run into the water, that represents like a full immersion of the kingdom. And so I feel like Axel is on the cusp of this full immersion where we're going to be so wet with the rivers of life and, and, and of the spirit. We're, we're going to be so fueled by eternity, kingdom creativity with an eternal mindset. So I just believe that that's where Axel's going. Um, and you can introduce, you can tell them about what she said. <laughs> wow, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, what was the question? <laughs> yeah, so just like explain. Advancing the kingdom. I'm sorry? Advancing the kingdom. And yes, advancing yes. the kingdom, yep. Um, well, we, <clears throat> so we're, we're, it's really kind of hard to put a name on it sort of thing. We do like all things video, really, at the end of the day. But essentially, we, pretty early on, as like we were discovering that this is what we were doing and all of that, um, we were unwavering in the decision that like every, like all the work that we do is advancing the kingdom. Right, so like everything that we're doing from on set to when I'm just like with my headphones on in front of my computer planning like whatever the shoot is sort of thing and especially when we partner with other ministries and all of that, like it is our heart's desire to amplify what God is doing in and through a place, right? If it's Axel, if it's Mercy Culture, if it's whatever other church or ministry or organization. And so as far as advancing the kingdom goes, we try to do that relationally on set. We haven't cast out demons on set or anything like that yet, but uh, we're believing, you know, that on, on set, that we invite the Holy Spirit on set, right? And so like, it's, it's, he has the liberty to do whatever it is that he wants to do, yeah. whether it's through that or partnering with whatever that final product is. So That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys are a husband and wife duo, which is yes, awesome. Are. And that doesn't always happen in, like, the creative space or even in the space where you're working together. Sometimes, you know, I, I've heard so many stories where people are uh, – focus on one person's job, the other person's job, or they come together, and you guys have come together. You guys decided, like, Katie, you decided, hey, I'm not going to go get a second income. I'm actually going to give everything that I have here in this season. What did that look like? And, and just talk to us a little bit about, like, that journey and sacrifice. And Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we've been married. We just celebrated 13 years of... Yeah! blissful sunshine and butterflies type of marriage. Um, this guy is a man of character and integrity. And I feel like whatever, whatever success we've had, I want to be successful in the kingdom. So like seeing this, the videos and things like that, like is just a testimony of God's hand in our life, working in our life. Um, and it's, we're just so honored to testify to that. Um, but whatever, six, like wherever we are thus far in our journey is I think a big part because of him and the way he serves our family and the way he loves us because it's easy to take big steps of faith when somebody's loving you well, when somebody's supporting you, when somebody's leading well for the, for, for, if you're a wife in here and you um, are with somebody. So for us, um, we've been doing video work since um, our daughter was born because we were making, we were working at a job and not making enough money and Jonathan was like, I can figure out how to do this. So he basically taught himself everything that, like everything. Um, but um, so ever since that beginning, um, 
we've been building, building the kingdom, building the kingdom, build, like living intentionally also, that, that's a big thing for us. And it kind of goes into your last question, but like everything we do, whether it's at home with our family, whether it's on set or working, whatever it is, we are doing it intentionally um, for the kingdom. And so when it was time where we felt like Jonathan, he could have retired at his last job. It was such an amazing job, super thankful for it. But we felt like that little nudge, like, hmm, I'm supposed to do something else. Like, okay, Lord, okay. And so um, it was easy to take a leap of faith and leave the comfortable job and go into the unknown of owning our own business um, when you're submitted to the Lord. When you're following hard after him, yeah. it's not hard. It should be harder to be in disobedience. Like that's actually what it should be. But yeah, it was, it was, it was fun. It was fun to take the risk. And do you wanna talk about how like, we did it though like with like wisdom. Like we, we didn't just say, hey, we're leaving, we. <laughs> Yeah, so we really, as far as like focus, as far as coming together in it, I think we, it was something that we prayed about and processed for a long time. And we had gotten several like confirming words about what that next season of our lives were going to look like. Like so much so to the point that I had a conversation with my boss. We had a long transition. We submitted ourselves to the process instead of just taking off and doing our own thing. And in the process, um, we we felt like this was the lane in which our, the Lord is going to like build a legacy in our family and all of that. And so it was easy to focus our attention on that versus her, her building her kingdom, me building my kingdom, and us separately trying to build the Lord's kingdom or whatever that even looks like and being more unified in in our vision with, with where we're going. So good, so good. And you just spoke on legacy, which is something I definitely wanted to hop into. Um, what is legacy for the creative and like, why is that important? You know, we, we can see the here and now and sometimes as creatives, we want to see that fruit now. But like, what, why is legacy important? Can you do so I think it's just super important because from the standpoint of like there's several creative people throughout all of history sort of thing. And we look back now with like the capacity, like, you know, even w what we had talked about before with Nikola Tesla and all of that sort of thing and him like dreaming up like the essentially the Internet and everything a hundred years ago before anybody had any of that. And he had this genius mind, but ended up dying like in a hotel alone like without that sort of same like legacy. You can say whatever about Edison and like all of that sort of thing and the way that he was, but you, from a creative standpoint, the Lord like gifts you with these skills and talents and this, this perspective to be able to create and express yourself. And if you're not doing it in a way that will outlast you, you're almost cutting yourself short as far as like what the Lord wants to do in you and through you. Um, I think it's one thing to be able to build a legacy and leave an inheritance financially, like for your family, like everybody wants to, everybody wants to do that. But the lessons that I'm leaving for like my son, Justice, who's sit sitting over there, are so much more important. And what's gonna benefit him the most is me pouring into him and me building a legacy with him. Um, versus me just handing him a check for however much money, you know? Yes. And so I think the lessons that, that we're learning, the things that we're building together in our family and for our family, but also for the kingdom of God, I think it has to outlast our lives in order for it to truly be impactful because we're just here for like, for, for nothing, you know, it's a, sha it's a passing shadow. Yeah. So, yeah. do you wanna add anything? so good and I think it's so easy for us to get wrapped in the now you know God is eternal you know and you're right this this moment is it it's like but a vapor right um, 
And so there, there's an assignment in this, in this life that we have. And um, it's so easy to get caught up in the distractions of being good at something or um, being known for something or, you know, just all of these things when it's like, man, the most important thing is, is your legacy, is your legacy that you're leaving and you're, and you're even teaching your kids to leave because that is, that's how the kingdom works, you know, the kingdom should surpass you. Um, how do you guys find yourself, like, how do you, okay, the question is, how do you keep yourself from getting so uh, entangled in um, the idea of being seen or being known or being the best or being, like, how do you keep your head focused on what God is doing and not get so caught up in the works of this stuff? I mean, we, it's an honor to be here, sitting here with you all, but we literally, we love building the kingdom, and I know that sounds, that could sound super like, oh, cool, they want to build the kingdom, but like, that is our driver. That's our driver. We want to build the kingdom because, that, like we said, this life is but a, a vapor, and so when we think about that, um, we want to do every, everything we're doing um, for the Lord. It's an offering to him. It's an honor to work for the Lord. And as creatives, um, the Lord put, he is the creator. It's something I always say um, in our family, but to our teams and things like that. Like culture should be getting their inspiration from the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. He's the creator. We're, we're, we should be walking in fu the fullness of our creativity all the time, and people should be inspired by us in humility, but in authority, so we can bring people to the creator. Um, but I think you had mentioned as far, I kind of forgot your question, but you had mentioned about assignments. Um, living, we, yeah, I, I really think that, I feel like in praying for tonight, I feel like people, he's going to talk about seasonal assignments and life assignments, and just what the difference of that is, but I feel like the Lord wants to lift, I, I heard people are stuck in their seasonal assignment, and so in the last few minutes, I feel like the Lord wants to lift that off of people, um, that burden, because it's actually a part of the, the, your seasonal assignment is a part of your life assignment. And yeah, so here, explain what that is. So the, what are the, what are the important things for our lives is being consistent every single day, right? Sort of thing. Like you, any given person has what the Lord has called them to for this season, right? to serve at a church or to be at a job or whatever sort of thing. We have these seasonal assignments and we feel like, oh, our season's coming to an end, this, that, and the other. But then in life, there are also these things that the Lord has spoken over each and every one of you to fulfill a specific destiny that he has for your life, uh, a life assignment of sorts, right? For me and Katie, some of those life assignments are obviously like, I'm supposed to be her husband forever, sort of thing. This is a life assignment. I'm supposed to be Justice's just, just father for a lo I'm his father for life, right? These are life assignments that every single day I am making steps forward in. It's, the goal is not it's, not, a, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, right? And every single day, in, in the same way, with knowing the Lord and making, you know, making sure that we're having our daily encounters and making sure that we're advancing in our relationship with the Lord, but also that we're in the process, that we're submitted to the things that will contribute to those life assignments. We talked about one of the things, one of the assignments that we feel that we have is to ultimately be in a place where we can help train and teach creatives and help essentially like Fuel, fuel the flame, right? Um, we've talked, I've, I often talk about the Medici family and Michelangelo and how he, was, uh, how he was discovered and brought to the Medici's compound and essentially like taught by 
the sculptors of the time, the greatest sort of thing, and how he was trained at a young age and brought up and basically given these, these, these places to, to, to put on display the gifts that God had given him. Um, and so we feel like a similar calling to be able to do that. So we want to submit, and in doing so, we're looking for opportunities to submit and serve and basically give of ourselves that we may be equipped and that we would learn. And so part of that process was we said, hey, SLS, like, what can we do to serve? And so we were, we've been able to be a part of the team there and serve there because I know one day there's this teaching and training aspect that if I can, if I can get in there and serve and, and submit myself to leadership and learn from there, that ultimately in the long run, like, it's going to yield something because we're, ultimately we're sowing, we're sowing that time. Um, so, Yeah. And for those of you who don't know what SLS is, it's our uh, Mercy, Skips, Mercy Culture Spiritual Leadership School that he's talking about. So Now taking applications. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, so there are life assignments that are these long things that we all have, right? But seasonal assignments, sometimes you're in a, maybe you're in a job you don't like. Sometimes um, maybe you're doing something you're not a fan of. Maybe you're not walking in your, you're not working in your creative outlet. And so that can be really frustrating. And so I, I feel like practically speaking, I think that there are certain ways um, to kind of get yourself out of um, that burden. Because in seasonal assignments, sometimes it's just the Lord. Like <laughs> this year, I, I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to say this. The, like, for example, our seasonal assignment this year, yes, part, part of it is spiritual leadership school. But this year, the Lord told my husband he's going to do more free work than paid work. So what does that even mean? We have a family, a huge family, like, okay, Lord, but this is a seasonal assignment. And I felt like the Lord, I feel like in a way the Lord is, he's, he's provided every step of the way and continues to just blow us away. But as we are serving, as we are submitting ourselves and saying yes to the Lord, um, we're posturing our hearts um, so he can use us more. And so for those of you, I just want to encourage and maybe even pray for those of you maybe who feel like you're stuck, um, maybe the thing to do is to serve somebody else's vision. Sir, like get under somebody that you're like, oh yeah, I, I really love what they're doing. I wanna learn. Um, and sometimes it's just like doing that. Like, what can I do? How can I help you? Sometimes it's giving. It's actually giving, like giving an offering, giving money, giving. Um, when we decided to start, when the Lord led us to start our business, he told Jonathan, God told Jonathan, give your camera away. And we're like, that makes no sense. Why would we give our camera away? We're supposed to start a film business. But in our obedience, the Lord did more that, like he continues to blow us away. So sometimes if, you're, if you may find yourself stuck, maybe you need to give something away to tell the Lord, God, it's yours anyway. Yeah. And so, yeah. You don't have to stay stuck in your season, seasonal assignment. That's so good. There's, there's so much more <laughs> I want to get to. Um, but I do want you to actually pray, if that both of you guys, if you would actually pray for some of the creatives in this room, just anything that you're feeling. You've already been prophesying, so just, just real quick. Go ahead. Father, we love you. Jesus, we love you. We worship you. Thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people, Lord. I thank you that you love every single soul in here and that they're here for a reason. So, Father, you spoke to me today that people felt stuck. They felt stuck. So I ask, Lord, that you would lift the burden off of them in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that your burden is light, Father. Lord, I ask that you would empower 
power, Holy Spirit, empower everybody in here to live in the fullness of their creativity, Father. Whatever gifts and talents and callings you've put on the inside of them, I thank you that now they are getting fresh oil from heaven, Lord, that they're getting strategies from the kingdom of God on how to advance the kingdom, whether that's to serve, whether that's to give, whether that's to just grind and make tons of work, Father. Whatever that is, I thank you, Lord, that now you're depositing the strategies from heaven in each person in here. Father, we thank you for your people. We thank you, Lord, that every single creative and just every single person in this room, Lord, you put on the face of the planet for, for such a time as this. Father God, that, that you, you gave us the opportunity to partner with you, Lord, in this, in this time, Lord, to see our generation saved, Lord, to see our generation's heart turn back to you, Father. So, Father, I, I just pray over your children now, Lord, that you would, would continue to make a way for them, that you would go ahead of them, that your word says the, the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. So, God, I thank you that you're clearing a path for these people, Lord, and that as they submit their lives to you, God, that you would continue to work all things out, Lord, for, for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purposes, God. We love you. We thank you, God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much. It was such a pleasure having you guys. Really quick. Go ahead. You can give it up for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, before you guys go, uh, I just want to quick plug you guys. Guys, follow them on socials. Their story is just incredible. Um, not only do, do they do amazing work, but they're just amazing people to get to know. So if you get a chance to talk to them afterwards, get to pray with them, get to love on them, please do so. And yeah, thank you guys so much.